a pair of AL clubs. We'll see the Chicago White Sox as they play against the Baltimore Orioles. Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. When he's on, he is almost unhittable. Eric Bedard will see if he's on for this game. Oriole Park, downtown Baltimore, the home of the Orioles, our site for this game. 2K Sports and Major League Baseball welcomes you. I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crutt. Their starter, Brad Bergeson. And uh, as he looks at this White Sox lineup, what are they going to see from him today? I've uh, got a good right-hander on the mound and a good lineup that he's facing right here. And it's going to come down to execution on either side to see who prevails. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. In our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Well, it's so rare for a guy that has some power in his bat like Alexi Ramirez has, but he doesn't strike out a lot. That shows he has great plate discipline, and he also, when he gets a chance, he puts the ball in play. So look for some excitement and some action every time he comes to bat today. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Last in their last contest for the O's. And uh, right now, they could end up splitting this four-game set. They've got to win these next two against the White Sox. Here's the pitch. This pitch is a sinker for a called strike. He just could not string anything together at the plate in that game. Now well, their bats were pretty much shut down. Good pitching stopped them. Line shot into center field. And so Damon retired. One away. And in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Base is empty with one away. Slider swung on a miss. 0 and 1. Always good coming off a three hit game the night before and gives you some confidence coming into today's game. That swung on line towards the gap in left center. And that's in there. The White Sox get a man on. And he's in at second with a double. 1 0. First base. We talk about a happy guy right there. So is his manager. Getting there to second base. Two outs to work with now for his offense. Let's see if his teammates can bring him in. And it's Paul Canerco now. Here's the delivery. Well hit towards the middle. And he continues that streak as that one goes through. And now we got a chance to take a quick look at how the Orioles will be setting up on defense. Particular standouts here, Steve. A lot of people talk about Matt Wieters, and they mentioned Johnny Bench. Now, that's a very tough comparison to make, but it, it points out the fact this young guy has all the tools to be a superstar. RBI opportunity right here for Carlos Quinton. Now he's coming off of a very special game last night. Three home runs in a single game. He has to be feeling confident going to the plate here. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. That's going to one hop off the wall. And Ramirez is home. Now batting for the Chicago White Sox. Well, you see the pitch Second down base. in the zone a little bit, but he got a good piece of wood on it and drives it. What you like about that at bat is the discipline to keep the head in. Well, I'll tell you what, he changed locations, went down to the zone. It's a solid piece of hitting. Well, you can really feel the pressure out there right now. The fans getting into it right here, and Brad Bergerson's going to have to work to get out of this jam. And he finds himself in an early pitching jam here, down by one, two on. They have to limit the damage, and they have a chance to be all right. They just have to settle down and make good pitches. Gone! Goodbye, a three-run shot. Now they lead by four, a three-run homer. They have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Alex Rio. Swung on by Rio. Strike one. Look, oh, Gary, I guarantee you the pitcher did not want to start like this. This is a really bad start, and recovery is not going to be easy. Well, he's going to have to adjust quickly, or this thing's going to get away from him. Here's the pitch. You're he out. strikes out Alex Rios in a swing and a miss. Well, he made it look easy right there. Slicing and dicing, just attacking the strike zone. Three pitches, all for strikes, sitting out. It's going to be Pruszynski. 
Lifetime pretty good number 315 off Baltimore. Base is empty with two outs. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0 and 1. Strike two. Bergeson way ahead now. Swing and a foul straight back. Bring him up. Strike three. But boy, what a solid offensive inning that was. And so they really take advantage of that first inning pitching. Four runs early. And doing the pitching, it'll be Eric Bedard. He's going to start for Chicago. What is it about this Baltimore lineup that they'll be looking for from him today? A good looking lefty on the mound right here against the lineup that can put some runs up on the board. So pretty even matchup. So it's going to come down to which side executes better than the other. Oftentimes we say good pitching can beat good hitting. Starts him out with a curveball for a strike. Keeps it down that time. 0 and 2. And it holds at 0 and 2. Bedard gets set and delivers. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And he'll step on first for out number one. And it's Miguel Tejada at the plate. See if he can't continue what he did last night when he picked up a couple hits. One out, nobody on. A smash to first. And Conerco getting to it. And he steps on first. That's the second out. It's going to be Weeders. 21 lifetime ABs. Two hits off the White Sox. And Bernard has him 0-1. That one a called strike. Oh, it's a quality fastball right there. Just pounding the strike zone down and away. He had no chance to put strike that one in play. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Matt Weeders. Watch that strike zone. Here's a swing and a line drive. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. And a good half inning there, gone in short order in this one. White Sox four, Baltimore none. Leadoff batter will get a shot at it later on in this inning. For the second well, there are going to be lots of snow cones and ice cream sales here today. Anything to cool you down. Mark Tian. And Mark Tian to bat. Right there in the top five in home runs. The pitch. And he watches one that goes inside 1 0 count. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Oh. Fly ball deep left, but it'll end up in the seats foul. Downward action on that sinker. One and two. I had the hat trick last night, striking out three times in that ball game, and see if he can't make some adjustments to that. Bring him up. Strike three. Count that one as K. I tell you, that kind of that kind of breaking ball in the low 80s is awfully tough to hit. And as Jim told me in the box now, what a year for him. Top five in homers. Can't catch up with that one. 0 and 1. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency I mean, is the critical to their success. Two away. Number 18. And it's Johnny Damon now. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops in runs scored. Top five. First pitch on the way to Damon. Swing and a shot to third. And that gets down. Damon, base hit. On base percentage leaders, every team needs them. Here's our State Farm leaderboard. Getting on base is a philosophy, it's a mental state, it's a really an approach, and these guys understand that. They understand they have to do whatever they can to get on. They have the toughest at bats of any hitters in the major leagues. 
So that brings Alexei Ramirez up. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. Strike two, Bergeson way ahead now. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. He was uh, able to ring up that K, and that's going to get him out of the inning. No runs on a base. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crook and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorpe. And Luke Scott to bat. He's off in a walk, top five in the league. And it's fouled away. Now it's all about patience and discipline, the name of the game. He's not afraid to wait it out. He understands the first strike may not be the best strike he sees. And there it is. That's their first hit of the ball game. That will bring Ty Wiggins to the well, a good piece of hitting right there. And anytime you get your first hitter of the inning on base, it could set up the potential for a big inning. That one's too low, Bedard missing. Well, anytime you have a good fastball and you can keep it down in the zone, around the knees or lower, it's great location and believe me, very difficult to hit. That'll be ball three, and uh, with three balls, Ty Wigginton, who likes to drive it, can be selected here. Hitting 230 in lifetime against the White Sox. Here it comes. Change up, swung on and missed. 3 2. Well, he clearly fooled him right there. He had him thinking fastball and he pulled the string on it, got him to swing right through it. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. It's down, a base hit. Scott is headed for third. He is safe at third base ahead of that play. The opportunity for offense is right now. Well, this sort of at bat right here, when you give up a hit after that many pitches, this is one of these things that could really rattle the pitcher. You up the middle. Base hit through the infield. Runner should score. Baltimore, keep it going. They are. One run. That comes in on that play. Let's see how it moves our chart. Brought to you by Pepsi. And it's fouled off. And Eric Bedard delivers strike two. He's in control in this AB. He gets two quick strikes on the hitter, but he can't be too selective now. He's got to go right at him. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. One away. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in doubles, first in batting average, and they're also the number one team hitting with runners in scoring position. That batting average driving in runners. This lineup knows how to hit in the clutch. They're patient. They let the ball come to them, and then they deliver. On to first, safe. Can't get the back end of that one. Well, they get the lead runner at second, but they just couldn't turn two. No, they wanted to. Bedard gets set and delivers. Fastball just misses. 1 and 0. Fly fastball right there. Just missed. Just below the knees. Tell you what, a borderline pitch. I think they wanted that one bad. Swing and a miss on the breaking pitch, and it's 1 and 2. Well, not a whole lot you can do when a pitcher's locating that curveball down in the strike zone. There's just not a lot for the hitter to get accomplished with that swing. You just hope to foul it off, and he makes a mistake with the next one. And uh, that half inning finished with a strikeout. So they scratch across a run. Three hits and a couple left on. Baltimore. And Paul Canerco to lead it off. He singled his last trip. Number 14, Paul Canerco. And he starts Canerco out. Hard ground at a short. He's out That's one away. Now State Farm brings you the lead leaderboard. The team's getting the most extra base hits. Number one, the White Sox. The Red Sox second. Blue Jays third. The Yankees fourth. And for the Orioles, they are fifth. Well, these two teams don't get cheated. They go up there swinging the bat looking for extra base hits. So pitchers are going to have to try to keep the ball down in the zone and on the ground. This one's grounded hard up the middle. Well, Quinton is retired. Second base. 
15. And Beckham's in the box. He homered earlier in the ball game. Well, with this advantage right now, he's been a major contributor offensively and driving in runs, and then obviously the home run production, getting a pitch that he could drive out of the ballpark, putting some good swings on it. First pitch, here it comes. Swings right and misses at the fastball, 0 and 1. Lifetime record, two for three off Ferguson. And he leaves that one alone. Gordon Beckham showing patience. That'll even up the count. Well, looking back to last night's game, a major contribution offensively and went deep. Nice job. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. One bounce onto the wall. He'll hold there at second base, credit him with a double. Hey, look, you'd love to see him hit a double earlier in the inning when there's no outs or even one out, but you're going to take anything you can get with two outs. Let's see if they can get another two-out hit to drive him in. And Alex Rios up. Struck out swinging last time. And he starts Rios up. Swing sits this one pretty well, deep right center. This is a one-hopper off the wall. There's the throw. And they score the run. The Openings for this the lineup Chicago offensively. Lakers. Don't give it to them now because they are hot. Just kind of lean in, Steve, and slap that thing the other way in that kind of pitch. Now that you can't pull that pitch. If you do, it's going to be a ground ball to short. You want to punch it to right field. He's one of the best to do it. Right. Swings and misses. The sinker, 0 and 1. Lifetime numbers, 2 for 5 off Ferguson. Nine drive left of the bag and foul. That one swung on, hit in the air deep to left field. This one's going to be fielded by Scott. And that's the third out. That'll do it. So they score once on two hits, one man left. The White Sox, four run lead. And if you are just tuning in, hi, Gary Thorne, along with John Crux, Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And we've got his tourist batting. He'll start things off for the home team. We're in the third. And here's the first one. Hit sharply towards the hole. This is placed perfectly for a base hit. And that'll bring Miguel Tejada to the plate. Second base. Number 10. Hole for one thus far. A runner on first, no outs. Now Brzezinski sets up, and Bernard has him 0-1. That one a called strike. The hitter lays off this pitch, realizing you can't oh. do much. When you get that kind of four-seam fastball down and away, it's tough to hit. Oh, Curve ball just off the black, and it's 2-1. Well, you want to keep an eye on the runner right here. Two and one count. They're not likely to pitch out. The runner gets put in motion. You might see a hit and run right here. It's time. Time to get it done. Baltimore, let's see if they can. A perfect situational hitting. This is exactly the time you want to go the other way. And what we're talking about is taking the ball where it's pitched. It's outside. Go the other way. First pitch. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a call strike. Well, this guy is a classic finesse pitcher with one of the best curveballs. And the double steal is on. Strike two. Oh, and they succeed on it. That's a double steal. Nice play. Oh. That one's too low. Bedard missing. Steve, also, the batters have to keep in mind he'll mix the fastball in once in a while, and he can really catch him on that pitch. Well, he can, but because the fastball is not overpowering, I think you have to stay back. Let the pitch come to you, and at times, look for the curve. Got him there. That was a nice strikeout. Number 30. Let's see this one again at K-Cam. It's a changeup. And Luke Scott to bat. Well, he gets walked a lot. The American League has him in the top five. Now the first pitch. There's a swing and a drive, deep right field. And it's going to be Quentin. As runners on the move. And as Turris will score. 
So now the Pepsi WPA graph will show us the difference that run batted in made. Man on third, two outs. Bedard gets set and delivers. First pitch, a fastball. That's in there for a strike. Looks at a fastball in there, and it's quickly 0-2. And Ty Wigginton swings right through that one. That's strike three. So they score once on two hits, one man left. Baltimore trying to get back into a position to challenge in this game. A glimpse of Dave Tremblay, the skipper. His club's moving in the right direction offensively. Last half inning, pitching is now critical to give his guys a shot. They try and get this tied. And here's Mark Tian leading it off. And he's in the top ten in the league and runs. First one to Tian. Here's the pitch. Swung on, hit sharply to first. And on number one as he steps on the base. And Jim Tomey. His lifetime average, 262 against the Orioles. The pitch. Swings, hits this one very high, deep to left center. Goodbye, home run. Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here, four up. Well, another one right there, Gary, and that's two home runs and for this team today, and it's they're spreading the wealth. Now White Sox down. lead expanding here, Gary. Right they now. just keep getting big Left hits. Fielder, number 18. One Ryan out, Gaines. bases in. First pitch on the way to Damon. And that's in there for a strike. Now we talk about a game of production, Steve. Uh, the home run, the runs, they are piling up in this game and so early. And that's why they really need to get this offense shut down now or this game could get out of control. Oh, what a drive. He smashed it. And Jones takes care of that one. That's two gone. As they make the pitching swap. Well, this wasn't the type of start the pitcher wanted, or the manager wanted, or his team wanted. Now they've got to see if the bullpen can do a little bit better. And a shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. On the way. And it's 0 and 2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. That ends the half inning as Scott makes the play. Well, they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. The White Sox, four run lead. And we've got Jones batting. Single home run in his last at bat. Adam Jones. And here's the first one. Bedard gets him to swing and a miss for a strike. Pitch on the way. Back up the middle. Back up. And Jones set down. There's more MLB this Thursday. Going to be Chase Utley and the Philadelphia Phillies. will host the Los Angeles Dodgers. All gets going at 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay, that's going to be a great matchup, and everybody's going to work. Liner towards the hole, and that's into right field for a base hit. The throw, and he is safe at first. He's on board. Well, a little action going right now for this team. A single here with one out. A little bit of momentum. Let's see if they can bring him across. Swing, soft liner towards right center, and that gets through for a base hit. Fantastic chance here. A uh, good bat speed Number against that baseball, able to get that inside pitch, rotate his hips, and pull it through the hole for a base hit. The first pitch, smash towards the middle, and he scoops it up. That's one out, and they get it. They turn two. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest your hand. The White Sox six, Orioles two. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. 
He has to be pleased with the position he's in now. Offense is cooking. And Paul Kaderko to lead it off. He's the league leader in ribbies. It's all in one as he swings and misses at that fastball. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. Oh, one the count right now after he fouled off that first one. Swing and a miss on the breaker. One down. A flat one right there at 80 miles per hour. Carlos Quinton batting now. There's one down. He's the league leader in hits. First pitch to Quinton. Swung on, hit. Oh, my. That almost got him. I don't know how he got out of the way. Two down here in the inning. Uh, you talk about a friend in need. They team up and get the out. Wow. And Beckham's in the box. He doubled at his last appearance. He's just on a tear right now. He's seeing the ball so well. He's driving in runs, scoring runs, hitting home runs, doing a little bit of everything to help his team win. That swung on contact. Scott's going to play it. That one's grabbed. Side retired. No hits. Nobody left on. And a good defensive happen. And if you've just joined us, our broadcast of Major League Baseball on 2K Sports with John Crock and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. And we've got his tourist batting for his career, 254 against the White Sox. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. Here's the pitch. He's at 0 2. He watched that fastball that was in there. Now that he's gotten the four seamer down and in, look for him to go outside now. That's foul back behind the plate. And that's another foul ball. Well, with the way we keep track of pitch counts right now, you know 0-2, the pitcher wants to put him away. The fact that he has to throw another pitch just tells you how defensive a swing the hitter had to keep it going. Foul. That's a foul ball. In, Eric. The 1-2 pitch. Hit hard on the ground to short. And that will set down as tourists. Here's the Central Division race as it stands going into the dog days of summer. Brought to you by State Farm. It's the White Sox in first. In second place, it's the Royals. Third place goes to the Indians. Twins are fourth. And rounding out the list, the Tigers. The uh, Chicago White Sox on fire right now, back from the dead. They couldn't do oh. anything right before, and now they're doing everything right. And Tejada makes good contact here. And it gets down. That's hit number two, making good contact. That'll bring up Matt Weider. Well, he did his job right there, getting on base. Now with one out, let's see if they can move him around and get him in scoring position. Bedard gets set and delivers. Swung and a ground ball to third. Over to second for one. Back to first. Not in time. One and two won't get it. Well, quick release by the third baseman. They get the lead runner at second, just not able to turn the double play. Scott in the batter's box. He frequently walked. He's the most walked hitter in this division. Ball strike on the outside corner to 21. He's gone one for two, lifetime against Bedard. Slider misses, and it's two and one. He's ready, Bedard, with a 2-1 pitch. Fouled off. And Przinski calls for the pitch. Fastball called. Strike three, and the side is retired. No runs on a hit, and they'll strand him. The White Sox still ahead. And Alex Rios to lead off. And right now, Tom Biden runs batted in in the lead. And he starts Rios out. A shot up the middle, picked up by Tejada. So Rios is set down. We'll take a look at the Eastern Division standings on the State Farm standing board as we head into the dog days of summer. Red Sox in first place. In second place, the Yankees. 
Orioles third place fourth spot the Rays and it's the Blue Jays last swung on a fly ball heading towards the corner and right it's back towards the wall and he still puts it away well, Gary you know he's settling into a groove right here and that's six in a row that he set down and here's Martin great season top ten in RBI this one's pretty well hit to deep left center it rolls all the way to the wall We've got a moment to see the State Farm League leaders in slugging percentage. Well, it's such an asset to an offense when you hit the ball in the ballpark, and these guys are clearly so important to their teams. That ability to drive in a run from first base or to drive yourself in from the plate. Uh, one thing they know they can count on in this lineup is his bat. He has been so consistently good. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Couldn't get around in time. 0-1. And that's a strike. Tomei's going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. On uh, the game last night, he took advantage of a mistake pitch and drove it out of the ballpark for a big time shot. That one misses. It gets away from the catcher. For those of you just coming on board, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crutch bringing you Major League Baseball on 2K Sports. And the first pitch. Swing, hot shot. Oh, mercy, caught it. He's got it in the glove. What an amazing play. That's some kind of play by the pitcher right there. You release the ball. You think maybe I can take a little bit of a break. The ball comes right back at you. He got his glove up and made the out. And we've got Jones batting. And not a lot of expectations here. Just a 182 lifetime average against the White Sox. 0 and 1. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. I think the hitter was looking for something out over the plate that he could drive. They pounded a fastball down and in for a strike. Waves at that fastball in the hole now 0 and 2. Here's the pitch. Still 0 and 2. Swing and a miss on the fastball. Second out in the inning. Here's the four seam fastball coming at you in K Cam. Get a better look. Nice pitch on the inside corner. That gets him fishing a little bit. Well, he wanted that one. You could see it in his body language. He just got out dueled by the pitcher on that one. Two outs and nobody on. First pitch on the way. First pitch inside with a fastball. Ball one. One oh on the way. He watches that fastball. It'll even up the count at 101. Ball That's two. taken low for a ball. Two and one. Looking and now it's two and two. Ball. And it remains two and two. You're and out. he looks at a fastball that's in there, side retired. Nothing doing here in this half inning. And it'll be the white side. And 
so Johnny Damon leads it off. Damon leads it off. Baltimore losing last night. So a losing series so far. First two of four. Hoping to change the momentum here against the White Sox. First pitch on the way to Damon. There's a swing, line drive, center field. One away now. And a moment to check out the August schedule for Baltimore. One game left for the White Sox, that's tomorrow. They get to try and cool down a hot team. The Cleveland Indians will be hosting. That'll be a three game series. And they'll be taking on the Rays, led by MVP, maybe, Evan Longoria. That's a team that's been really putting it all together lately. So, and that's swung on and hit. And Jones, play is made. Up to the plate for the Chicago White Sox. First base. Canerco at the plate. Paul Canerco. Two outs, bases empty. First pitch on the way. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch, 0 and 1. Well, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. Right Couldn't pull the trigger in time. He's behind 0-2. And out. Paul Canerco strikes out. Could not make contact. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest your arm. The White Sox 6, Orioles 2. Dave Tremblay taking a look. And uh, tough decisions, maybe, or maybe not. This bench needs some inspiration. He'll try to give it to him. Base hit his last time. And the first pitch. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Look, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes get outs right now a swing and a batted ball Damon one down here's the Central Division race as it stands going into the dog days of summer brought to you by State Farm first place the White Sox second place the Royals in third the Indians twins are fourth and rounding out the list the Tigers in the tough AL Central we all thought the White Sox would finish down on the pack but instead they're sitting on top and making us all look silly Bedard gets set and delivers. Ball. Slider just misses one and all. Look, Gary, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. They're looking good. The pitcher's throwing strikes. The defense making plays. They've got a big lead. Everything feels Strike good. One. Gets that call at the knees. Evens the count at one apiece. He has great bite on this slider, throwing it down and into the hitter. Gets away with one, and he gets in for the strike. Two. Swings for a strike on the fastball. It'll be a one-two count. Swing and a miss on the fastball, second out in the inning. Credit the pitcher right there. Good two strike pitch down and away. Not much he could have done with that, even if he had made contact. And we've got his tourist batting. Grounded out his last time through. Two outs and nobody on. And the first pitch. Swing, hot shot. Bedard throws the first side is retired. And they're held in check here in this half inning. The White Sox still on top. Leading it off, Carlos Quinton. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. First pitch to him, a curveball. Swung on and missed 0-1. Line towards second, picked up by Tejada. So Quinton is retired. Let's take a look at the Baltimore Orioles and how they're ranking in the American League right now. Sixth in batting average, sixth in hits, and they're in the top ten in on base percentage, which is a big part of their offensive production. Getting guys on base is critical to a team's success in scoring runs. Great strike one, can't make contact on the fastball. Here's the delivery. Strike, strike two. two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. It's fouled oh. off. Yeah. A 
A swing and a miss. Strike three, but a chance at first. And out. The catcher makes the play. Oh, that's a great play, Gary. Pitch in the dirt. Gets away from the catcher. Does a great job retrieving the ball and gunning him out at first. If you're a pitcher, you never want those strikeouts not to get recorded. Good play to be able to get the out at first base. And he starts Rios out. Oh. That's hit foul by Rios. Here's the pitch. There's a swing and a hit deep into center field. Way back there. Goodbye, home run. Add one more to that lead. Solo, big fly ball up by five. Now White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. 12, AJ Krasinski. Two outs, bases empty. Here's the first pitch. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0 and 1. And Steve, uh, this is a point in the ball game where you are really putting it to the opposition. The long ball can do that to you late. Well, there's no question. I mean, you give up those home runs, and it just deflates your own team. So, offense ruling the day. A liner headed for the hole, and it's in there. That hitting streak continues. That brings up Mark T. And now a chance to check out the league hit leaders brought to you by State Farm. He doubled his last time. Runner on first, two away. First one to T. And here's the pitch. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. Hits off the wall and a hop. He throws. And here's Pazinski heading home. Now That'll bring up Jim Tomey. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average, first in batting average with runners in scoring position, and they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the runs scored, you give yourself a chance to win. And we'll see Jim Johnson pitching. He'll be the relief pitcher for the Orioles. Struck out swinging last time. Tomei gets in. Here's the first delivery. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0 and 1. His lifetime average 262 against the Orioles. And that's a strike. Tomei is going to have to hit with a little less of a cut here. Apparently he's looking for something a lot harder than that four seam fastball. I don't know what else he has because he's way out in front. So they pick up a run on the home run and add to their lead. White Sox, they've got a commanding five run lead. Miguel Tejado, leading it up. Two for three thus far. Number 10, Miguel Tejada. First pitch to Tejada. That one's too low, Bedard missing. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth. Hit hard to second. Beckham. And that'll retire to Hot. Number 32. It's going to be Weeders. Bounced into a fielder's choice as last time. Bedard gets set and delivers. Ground ball headed for the middle. And Weeders is retired. He's retired 10 in a row. The hitters are completely overmatched right now. He's got it all going on. Base is empty and two down. First one to Scott, the delivery. Now swinging a shot toward second. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. No strikeouts, but you talk about confidence. Four pitches, three batters gone. The White Sox still on top. And so Johnny Damon leads it off. Left fielder, number 18. Not, Gary, I Johnny think you're losing Damon. a little something here. I don't think this guy's nearly as solid defensively as the one he's replacing. So interesting move. First pitch on the way to Damon. Hit in the air, in right, foul territory. Good effort there, but he couldn't get into position to make that play. Right 
Johnson out in front. No balls, two strikes. Well, he's got great movement on that two-seamer. It's one of the best around. Curve ball got him one way. This pitch has a little life to it at 84, and the gun is a pretty good movement. Alexi Ramirez. I just don't think you can make it any easier than that. Three pitches, up, down, see you later. He's already back at the bench. And here's the first one. Ramirez will foul that one away. Johnson with a windup. Swung on, that is hit. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with a single. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco. Oh, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Second in doubles, third most in hits. Uh, he, you'll notice he's also ranked in the top five in batting average. A guy that puts it in play, finds holes, and finds a way to get himself on base. Runner at first with one down. And he starts Canerco out. Pitcher gets a little help right there. A dirt pitch for a swinging strike. And the 0-1 by Johnson. That one's on the ground, but he gets it in front of him. And here's a swing and a miss. He couldn't get that one. One and two. Well, if you're going to be late on the fastball, you're going to have trouble hitting up here, and he's struggling right now. Hit sharply towards the hole. Coming Tremendous back. situation the now for the White Sox. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Quinton. It doesn't matter who's on the mound or what they're throwing, these guys can hit it. They are just together building confidence and whacking at it. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. His career average, swing and a drive, deep left center. Two away. That keeps those runners at first and second. On base percentage leaders, every team needs them. Here's our State Farm leaderboard. In order to score runs, you have to get base runners, and these guys understand that. They find ways to get on. They'll take a hit. They'll get hit by a pitch. They'll take a walk. They'll do whatever they have to do to get on base and lead to a run score. Here's the first pitch. Watches a fastball that's in there. 0-1. Well, the hitter's got to regret that one. He missed his pitch right down the heart of the plate. Four-seam fastball. That hurts. Strike two. strike two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Line hard down the left field line. That one falls. That should bring Ramirez home. And Ramirez is home. Coming to bat. Well, they just keep the adding White to the lead right now. That ought to be Fielder, enough to carry him through the bottom half of the inning, I think. Alex Rios. And he starts Rios out. Swing and a shot to third. Gets through. That run's going to score. Coming to bat. But that Chicago big lead White just Sox. got a little Catcher. bit bigger. Well, and I have to think AJ this one's just Brzezinski. about over. Runners at first and third with two away. First pitch on the way. Well hit towards the middle. And that ball gets through and the runner's going to come home. Coming to bat. Well, they just keep adding to the lead right now. That ought to be enough to carry him through the bottom half of the inning. Two men on, two men up. First one to T in. Here's the pitch. He swings on that 0-0 delivery, misses the fastball. Strike one. Well, I tell you what, for a two-seam fastball, he had some good movement and good pop on that one. Batter swung late. And that ball gets through, and the runner's going to come home. Coming to bat. 
for the Chicago That big White lead Sox. just got a little bit bigger, and I have to think this one's just Game about over. Coming. Now we've got Clay Meredith out on the mound. They've decided it was time to make a change here. Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, anytime you need a ground ball, Clay Merritt's a guy to bring in the game. He's a side armor. He has that sinking fastball. Nothing right overpowering. 86 to 89 miles an hour. Throws a little change up in an average slider, but he's going to get you out with that sinker. The thing is, most sinker right ball two. pitchers are going to keep it away from left-handed hitters and into righties. But he has the ability to go on the other side of the plate and jam lefties with it and keep the ball away from right-handed hitters to induce ground balls. This is what makes him so valuable for his team. They pound out six hits in the inning and push across four runs as well. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Ozzie Guillen taking a look at you right there. He has to be very pleased right now riding this one up. First pitch to him. There's a swing and a liner towards first. So Adam Jones will be coming up. We take a look at the Eastern Division standings on the State Farm standing board as we head into the dog days of summer. In that first spot, it's the Red Sox. Yankees in second place. In the three hole, it's the Orioles. Rays are fourth. And it's the Blue Jays last. Swing and a foul straight back. No balls. One strike. Here's Bedard. And this is hit in the air, foul down the left field line. Tried to track that one down, but comes up empty. And that's another foul ball. Shot back to first. And Conurco makes the catch, and they'll hold him at first base. Uh, just having some difficulty right now trying to make up this ground, and, and obviously they've got a hill still to climb, and running out of time right now, only two outs remaining, so they've got to get something going and keep it going. And Aubrey at the plate. Trying again here, just one for three thus far. The pitch on the ground to second. It's gobbled up. The opportunity for offense is right now. Well, the pitcher did everything he could right here. He got the ground ball like he wanted. But you see this runner, man, once he left the box, he is flying, and he beats this one out. And here's the first one. That swung on and a liner here. Beckham able to pull that one in. And that keeps the runners at first and second. And the right fielder batting again. Wearing the collar thus far. Lined right at the second baseman. That's going to be a wrap. Final out of the ball game. Fans going home unhappy in this one. Their offense just did not get it done as the opposing pitching just shut them down. Wow. As we check out the highlight reels of our Pepsi Clutch performer. Well, yeah, I agree. Complete games seem to be a dying art, but every now and again, someone tosses a gem like this one. When you take to the road, Steve, any win will do. But when you get this kind of offense, it's very satisfying. Well, it also sends a message to your club and to that club that you showed up to play. So for Steve Phillips and John Crock, I'm Gary Thorne. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon.